call me Fuego. 93 like me. Fire in the sheets, spending summers on the seas. Quedo, she don't wait, oh. Devil life on the day, There is, but I think more so than anything else, the teams that aren't traveling are not living in a different country. They're not living in a different culture. Mm. Food is so important. You saw on Twitter all of these teams from North America wanting a burger. Imagine doing that for two entire months. All right. Well, the game is getting underway. A big shout again to Intel, Toomey, Zowie, and Perrier for making this possible. And let's go to the two voices who will be bringing us the match. It is Matram and Porosaurus. Gentlemen, take it away. Thank you, Toffees, Cam, and Clover. We're getting everything up and in the air, but I just want to give another follow-up shout-out to PGIS being presented by Intel, where not just gaming happens, but all of PGIS. We have a global event going on as we're all spread across the world and couldn't do it without them. Poro, it's game time. It is indeed, and my God. It's been a year, and we're starting off with a hot drop, baby. Burry Rom and TSG, let's go. Instantly coming through. Quick drop's going to be coming out of that. We can see Uzi's coming out. He can make the play around the outside of this. Gets a quick shot back over towards it. Got to look back over towards his left. Not going to spot it out. A quick pickup back on the other side of this. But you can see Burry Rom already in a little bit of trouble. Two members down to TSG's one with a nice firm angle looking back over there. TSG does have control over the situation and really does have a lot of them pincered back behind this. So Burry Rom trying to find an angle out from this position. Not going to find it just quite yet. But everything's starting to slow down just a touch, Poro. My man out there popping people with the car 98. Volibear going to try to take a few shots. Not going to land anything right now. Burry Rom just holding corners right now. Looks like TSG is going to go ahead and flush this one out. Uh, but that's uh, a 2-1 trade so far. We'll see if TSG uh, can maybe do a little bit of rallying here. Because Burry Rom, they're just kind of staying there holding their corners while the TSG guys go about their business. Old school PUBG tactics right there. If you guys remember back in the day, Burry Rom essentially bringing out the bathroom strats, but just leaning into the hallway, even got the shotguns prepped and ready to go. Everybody knows you do not want to round that corner. Well, this is so a TSG car instead, dude. Playing this patient, trying to make a little bit of a push up and forward. You can see Bully Bear not having any more shotgun ammo at the time. Maybe he could have some. We'll have to see if he goes for the reload on it. But the aggression starting to come through, loading up, getting the armor, getting the helmets, making sure whenever they go for this push back around, they are set. Going to see the flashes come through, going for the flip back around. Oh, oh, oh it does not connect. God, the last one up over on his side. Trying to look back over for this one. See if he can peek back over through it. Gets the spray back over towards one with the shotgun. But can't pick up the other one. So with this, Burry Rom is not just our first blood. They are our first team eliminated. God, meow. Almost with the God shotgun plays right there. E look, Edie was with his back up against the wall. You're in a, you're in a firefight up close and uh, in person and you're rocking a car 98 man that's just not where you want to be but got me out almost pulling it off tsg though coming in clutch now they got to play out with two players from this point on and i mean uh, yeah they got four kills that'll take you somewhere all of our teams have managed to make their way into the zone really it's just e36 and uh, DGW oh. finding themselves in a little bit of a spot on the outside of this. A good spray is going to come back over. Doesn't get the down back over towards it just quite yet. But that nation's trying to hold the line. Finally gets one of them down. It's going to be Pure Boy that gets down and flush quite quickly. But a return not going to come back on the other side. Isn't this always the way? Only two teams from Japan. And of course, they run right into each other. Just seems like this happens every time we have an international event. We'll see who comes out on top. This time, Detonation Gaming White. We're in a little bit of a split at the at the time the fight broke off with Furia kind of creeping up on their southern side here. Sees a well-known name in Japanese PUBG. He's been around forever, and he's going to be bringing up the rear. And another hard shift down to the south, and uh, it's looking good for day trade to see what they decide to do here is all these teams from the north and the east are going to have to sort things out before they make their way in, Matram. Do note Sonic's positioning right now. That is going to be key. They have got a pivotal point where they can really harass a lot of the teams. Zenith also in a pretty strong point back behind this. Navi should be able to circle in right back behind them, but it is just starting to be a death trap back over towards the east. As you can see, it's just team upon team falling back over onto this angle. E36, Sylphia looking back over, trying to make sure to keep control. T1 has decided that they want to try to third party this, but it has moved into a very close range skirmish. You can see Aqua 5 
trying to get a little bit more information to realize how that they're going to try to move through this. No team really moved into a strong gatekeeping position. You can see that two members of T1 are back and holding an angle on this, but have to play it very, very carefully. Meanwhile, on the complete opposite side, it's going to be a little bit of a fight breaking out as Navi is trying to get a little bit more damage back over towards 4AM. Nice flight coming back behind it, but Forever is going to go ahead and spot this one out, get the shots back over towards it, but it's going to come at a little bit of a cost. One of the members of 4AM already down and flushed out. So it is just fight upon fight as everybody was trying to stay alive for so long. That means that the circle has gotten too small and it cannot contain the amount of teams that we've got going on. There's a skirmish that's happening back over towards the north that's starting to break out, as well as Sonics, TSM, and K7 all finding themselves right on top of each other. And Sonic's already coming out the loser so far in this. They've lost Shrimzy and Tig. It's down to Win and Mime. They have the high ground here still, but they've got to try to do their best to third party onto this. They don't want to be the one that's getting third partied onto. So K7, TSM, going to try to strike it out here. Win and Mime just need to be opportunistic here and try to stay alive as long as possible, see if they can pick up a few points. Find the angle back over towards it. You can see Mime's got himself a nice position to play. TSM's Miraku down on the foreground in this. It's all about the high ground advantage, but only two members for the Sonics up. And do note, while this is going on, there is a little bit of a play coming up back behind it. As Meta hears oh, this yeah. fight and sees an opportunity right back behind K7. Good positioning coming out from them as Silzen's going to potentially find an angle to work with, potentially throw a couple of grenades back over towards this. But now Iro and TSM have found themselves in a very sticky position, being essentially pinched between three different teams at the time. Luckily, Meta is having to contend back over with K7. Meta is trying to make the push back along this line, but K7's trying to find an angle for it. Xavier living up to his name, giving the shots back over towards Wicked, but it does go down. Meta is just walking up this hillside, taking it on team upon team. Already up to four kills, and it's going to stack up very quickly as they're going for the flushes real fast. TSM aware of what's going on, trying to get the shots back over towards K7, as Sonics has used this opportunity to move away from this position. I love the push from Meta there. I love that aggressiveness that they're bringing out here. Not afraid of anybody in this lobby. That's exactly what you want to see. Even if they lose a couple there, it's still the right play, the right push at the right time. We'll see if they can get anything else off of it, if they can survive this as K7 and TSM still scrapping back and forth and Mime and Win from Sonics still looking for another angle as well as this fight is just lasting forever. Good play coming out from TSM. Still managing to hold strong right along this point, but Meta is about to be in a point where they can start to contest against it. Last member for K7 sneaking up back behind everybody from Meta Game. It could be huge. Goes from spray back over towards it. Does get one of them down as Meta goes running back over towards this other angle. Silzen's going to go ahead and get another pickup, and that's going to be K7 eliminated. But TSM still has the high ground, overwatching everything that's going on. Do note there's Good also going to be a nice toss coming down from Bard going to get that flush back over towards it so tsm making a massive oh, amount of use of this high ground and constantly harassing metagaming who has just been running amok in this northern corridor while sonic stays alive meta has been doing everything they can and they have looked fantastic doing it it's going to be rough sledding here for vard is i think and maybe got him and pinned down there. Oh, the grenade going to go just a little bit too far. So Vard stays alive for right now. He could still cause problems for Meta here. But do note, Meta, TSM, and Sonics, none of them are inside the safe zone. Looks like Sonics is going to go ahead and start to make a play back over towards this. While a lot of this has been going on, T1, 4AM, Day Trade, and Zenith have all started to fortify their positions inside the circle. Only teams that really haven't had an opportunity to move in are the last remaining member, Orange from Navi, and this fight that's been happening back over towards the north. So Orange found himself in a little bit of a difficult position. Zenith kind of caught up taking shots back over towards Gex, though, so might provide an opportunity for Orange to sneak his way inside the safe zone. You see Roth is on the lookout for snakes here, though, on your mini-map there. He's, he's expecting somebody to come from that south side while the rest of the team does look off to the north. But Navi, we'll see if he can make his way across. Looks like he might have spotted out Kickstart here. And he's just going to play it close to the vest, try to survive a little bit longer here as the circle starts slowly pushing in. Meanwhile, it looks like Meta has managed to make their way into the circle. TSM done. As Sparking and Silzen trying to find a place to play from. And oh boy, they're going to be running right into 4 a.m. here shortly. Ooh. Oh, that's some dangerous neighbors to have. That is a potentially angry four men looking back over towards this. Instantly, you can see shots going to start coming back over from T1 side. Aqua 5 does connect back over towards Silzen. 
gonna have enough cover to potentially get the res onto it. But you can see what we're looking at for the potential last couple of circles. It's pretty wide out. There's a couple little dips, small ridges that you can play. Long toss gonna come back over towards it. The bounce isn't gonna go the direction it was hoping for though. So Meta does manage to get the res back over towards this. New circle's about to pop. Uh -oh. Looks like it could be pretty problematic for everybody that's still playing back over oh, towards the dang edge. Shit. Does go back over towards the north and there we go. Nice grenade coming out from T1 to go ahead and flush that out and open up the center of the circle. This is a good looking T1 squad right now. They're playing very, very well. Uh, it's not something that we've been used to seeing lately is they've kind of been uh, being pulled in multiple directions, but it looks like the team comms on point right now. Meanwhile, Mime and Win will see if they can survive any further in this game. They're giving 4 a.m. fits as they try to make their way through and staying alive through all of this. So we've got a, an interesting situation that's set up with one, again, oh. high ground advantage going back over towards the Sonics and they are gonna make sure to continue to use it. Aggressing back over towards Gex, who's kind of been forced to play down inside of a trench. Not a lot of options to play for right now. You can see Sonics do wanna try to make a play up and forward through this, but 4AM causing their own form of harassment back up along that hillside. Really the open field towards the center and seeing metagaming go down has kind of established this point to where there's these two different sides where everything's going on. Zenith trying to make a little bit of an encroachment back over here is trying to find a way to get back over into this positioning, but do note 4am and T1 could find themselves with an angle to work with. And still there is orange hiding out back behind Zenith that could put in some massive work. You can find a, a way to yet again, sneak in back behind this. I well, got to worry about Shandyan now too, as the snakes yeah. might be the biggest problem here for Zenith is they keep playing the edge they're finding good places to hold from but they have, they have no idea about orange or oh looks like Nurens has spotted out orange though and shandyan and there you go the snake finally strikes gets the knock can't get the flush though zenith can get lucky Ooh. here they they got to take this guy out before the flush comes through luckily there's a touch of distraction but with those gunshots that means now daydream's looking back over towards the south they are in range and do have vision to get something back over towards it. Gex does go down, so that's going to allow a little bit more movement coming back from Sonics on the other side of this. See, so trying to make a play back over towards center, trying to get in some type of position to make a play back over towards 4 a.m. Orange, though, trying to capitalize off the opportunity he created just a second ago. Moving forward, cannot quite find the angle just yeah, yet. So you can see everybody from Zenith trying to get an idea on what's going on and having to take covering fire back over from where Day just still has an angle for them to play from. So this is opening up more and more opportunities back over for Orange. Meanwhile, 4 a.m. starting to find themselves in definite grenade range. Oh, win. Win with the flush, and he's going to finish him off. Sonics now with seven kills, just as dangerous with two as they are with four. These guys are absolutely bananas. Now they've spotted out Shin Boy. Oh, Aqua going to get the knock, though. Can they steal it away? So of course this. they can. It's mine. Yeah, I mean, Sonic's already at eight kills. They have control back over towards the west. God B is kind of having to hunker down at this point. But our team's back over towards the east, specifically the northeast, are going to have to move. Day's finally going to have to move out of their compound and contest again this area right next to T1. Zenith, though, still under a lot of harassment. Poonie's trying to find some angle to play from, but there is nowhere safe in the center of the circle as everybody is just taking shots back over towards them. And surprise, surprise, another kill goes back over towards the Sonic. They are so good when their backs are again up against the wall we'll see if they can manage to get some more placement points out of this they still have the the problem of god v i'm looking up to the north here as well t1 has to deal with day trade okay orange finally gets taken out but orange did his job and he did it well i think he landed, landed up lasting longer than zenith yeah but with this, now we're going to have a little bit of that fight breaking off. Our strong teams are finally going to have to contest up against each other. There's just remnants other than these two. And you can see now Dave making the play back over towards T1. Star-Lord finds himself an angle oh back over towards one, two, and about to be three. Trying to get the spray back over towards it, but doesn't find it just quite yet. Oh. Instead, going to go down. And you can see Day Trade just trying to get these flushes, get as much damage as they can before they go down. T1, though, now distracted, making the play back over here trying to get everybody on their team back up sitting on nine kills and they're going to have the numbers advantage moving into the circle but they're the only team that does have to move this is the t1 that everybody has been waiting to see it's been so damn long before since we've seen them actually just running through teams and 
being this dominant play style. There you go, Godby. Barely loses the 1v1 with Mime there. And Sonic's now up to 10 kills. NA fans, are you not entertained? We'll see how this thing plays out. Sonic's have a really nice ridge to work with here, though. Yeah, but they're going to have to move. But it's going to be TSG no. taking the shots back towards the side of T1 Star-Lord. It's going to force a little bit of a reposition coming out from this. Meanwhile, on the other side of it, h -Win does connect back over towards Dang-G and does get him down. So this is starting to open up the gates as we moved into a 2v2v1. TSG trying to reposition onto it, but the high ground coming up. h -Win trying to find the angle back over to it and does not connect enough through the smoke to get the down. Bullets. That's starting to open up everything. They are running so low on ammo. They've been running low on ammo. Hopefully he can find something out of here. He's just going to switch over to the SLR because there's just no 5.56 five, to be found. And now Starlar going to try to take the shots back over there. Shandian managed to actually reposition and get himself another nice little ridge line to work with. Each win. Been using that mini all game long, and now he's switched over to the SLR. We'll see how long it takes him to, uh, to adjust to the recoil difference there. Oh, he won. Shot in the head. Star Lord, there it is. Walks in the open and Star Lord goes down. That's a huge problem for them. TSG still holding on. This one member has been buying so much time and point upon point for his team. Not afraid to take the fight back over towards T1 or Sonic's both. Doesn't matter that he's outnumbered, but Sonic's aware of what's going on. Are trying to reposition through this Aqua 5, trying to connect the shots back over to take down this thorn that has been the constant hanging out in their side. Because now we are moving into the very last circle. Five seconds before everything starts kicking off. And you can see it's going to be problems. A lot of these teams playing back over towards edge. T1's Aqua 5 does have the closest position towards the safe zone. Is going to be the last one to move. Sonic's trying to make a play back over towards TSG, but cannot find the angle. So with this TSG trying to get a little bit of distance from them. Starting to make the play back over towards it, but could put them back over towards Aqua 5's line of sight. The shot's going to go back over towards it, and there we go. Aqua 5 picks that one up, moving us into a 2v1, and it's two Goliaths looking back over towards each other. Good shot's going to connect from Mime, force a little bit of a reposition, and using that, H-Wood just runs down the hillside with covering fire coming up on the other side of it. Mime's trying his best to keep his teammate alive, so that way H-Wood can move right into the face of T1's Aqua 5 playing around the outside angle for it, trying to look for it. Grenade's going to roll back over towards it. Shots are going to come up from the top of it, and it's going to be mine that connects with this one. And with 12 kills, Sonics take the first game of PGIS. We have been wondering for the entirety of 2020 if this Sonics team was legit. Was this a team that was just NA good, or are they a team that is internationally good? They come in here, they kick the damn door down and let everybody know that NA is here to play and Sonics in particular are ready. They're, the time is now, and they want to take as many points and as many kills and make a, as big an impression on the world of PUBG as they possibly can, as early as they can.